fifty. One point three million total. Okay, so you did two fifty because we allocated fifty. Oh, correct. Correct. Yes. correct. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and in reality, are we going to have to throw more money at it than that? Yes, the utilities will have to pony up some money, but that will certainly help them get it going. But those are the projects we see as being very critical. Uh, just to give you a quick update of our project listing in, uh, in the order of importance for this year, the very first thing we're doing, and we're well on the way, got all the electrical set up and ready to go, but we are going to take care of those nine lights around the courthouse that you folks so graciously gave us a resolution to go ahead and do, and we won't have to worry about those falling down. So we're going to get that first and foremost, and the next project that we would look at would be we're having an investigation done right now on the Minnow Creek situation <coughs> we talked a little bit about. For years and years and years, everybody's been doing this about who is responsible and uh, there was an obscure uh, piece of, of uh, legislation going back to uh, 1947 Isn't that right shot up 42 and then revised in 46 yeah that basically uh, and the county came up with it basically said the city took over responsibility for this going way back when we didn't know anything about it uh, Attorney Perkins did some research, and the, that was done a lot back in those days in municipal uh, situations where there was dual responsibilities. That was done a lot. That was all negated then in 1964, Andy, right? Uh, right. In 19, 1964, the state came in, and there was some statewide legislation kind of created uh, uh, what became what we know today is is how drainage is, is handled and created you know uh, uh, entire county departments to handle those issues before then it kind of been a hodgepodge of petitions before courts uh, involving individual property owners yeah again another example of you know years ago government minutia and this and that and that nothing clearly clearly defined well we're going to wrap our arms around that and in the process we're going to create the the storm water utility that's way overdue being create, created as well and then get some get some funds generated from that utility to continue the maintenance of our storm water situation and uh, that is uh, going to be we're going to be taking a look at the first steps of what needs to be done we have no idea how big that elephant is but our engineers have been looking at it and we're going to have a report on february the 4th so the next time we meet as a council we'll have a very good reporting of what that looks like in the meantime we've taken some of our uh, minnow creek drainage funds that we've received over the years and uh, we're, we're making some initial cleanup of of the creek we had a contractor going out taking a look to see what it's going to cost to pull this tree out or that stump because we've got a real problem it's a real issue you know these poor folks that are living along there that have water coming in their back door because it flows into their yards we've got to do something so we're going to move forward on that so those are the <coughs> critical things that we're starting out the year with to uh, to move forward. So what do you need from us tonight? You're asking the well, question if we could can allocate you, that could money. You, could you, uh, then yeah, we, give if we us say yes, then we turn over to Baker Tilly for the plan to submit? Yeah, I, I'll have to, I'll talk to Eric and see with the simplicity of, of this being strictly, I mean, if you guys allocate it this way, the plan's going to be pretty simplistic to write, so I don't know that we would need Baker Tilly to do that, but I will okay. want to pass Eric just to make sure I have all my T's crossed and my I's dotted before I it, write that It's policy. two projects. It's not 22 projects. Right. Mm -hmm. So it should be pretty simplistic. But I can have that written into you guys for the next <coughs> meeting, I'm sure. Now, Shada, was that exactly $1.3 it was it was over. It's in some change. I don't remember yeah. the exact amount, but it was like because one point we three. <laughs> Five three, five three, yeah. three six three, something so like it's that. It's actually fifty thousand yeah. more. 
Yeah. I, when you said that, I was thinking yeah. that, that so I we think we actually still had a full 1.3. Did you have 300 yeah. for the 150 yeah. to go yet? Or, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. It was one. Was it one point three five? Is that what it was? What you were saying? Close. I think it, it was. It was. When we were when we were doing the online tool. I think it was one point three five three. And that sounds right. And because I remember thinking when you guys had agreed to do the fifty thousand for the health department, yeah. that it still left us with one point three total and a little bit of extra change there. So when I write the policy, when I, we actually write the plan, I will off the top include the health department first. That that will be that because that fifty thousand will be reimbursable back to our riverboat fund because that's where we paid it out of since we that's where we had appropriation available. So I will that'll be the first thing I do is that'll be a reimbursement back to our fund, and then the uh, one million for the stormwater project and then remaining balance towards the water utility project. Now the one thing about the plan is, and Andy can correct me if I'm wrong on this is it will be it, it'll be written in a manner that it can still be adjusted so if something comes up down the road or we get more money and we need to reallocate or shift things around or for whatever reason say the water main project comes in under budget and we still have some extra money we would be able to add or remove things in that plan so we'll write it that way so that it can be you know, again, Am I incorrect on that, Andy? You're nodding your head, so I think I'm good. I think you're right. I'd want to run that by Eric as well, but I yes. think that reason. Yep. You know, Andy, I've got to ask you, is that a real law library, or is that a set you built to sit in front of for this TV production? Hey, that is a real law library. That's pretty cool. <laughs> because we weren't, we weren't about to get Bob Peterson to use a computer to do research. Ah! <laughs> that's that's pretty sorry. neat. <laughs> okay. Do um, you uh, have any, any comments about what we'd like to do? Or? Did we have a list of like what we decided or what we were looking at? On the, like, through the tool. Well, that's what Shadow was just talking about. Um, yeah, I don't. Know. Um, I will have to. I, so I was asking Brian. I didn't think to go on and look to see what all of there the. There were guys a couple had. projects that Marcus and Derek presented that I thought were good use, but that's before we knew stormwater. I mean, stormwater is obviously our biggest problem. That I think we need to. If we have a shot to get that going, we want to want to take it. Yeah. It's yeah. it's a it's a neglected area for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, going back to Bob Ulrich days when he sat right there saying, "We ought to be getting a dollar every year from folks just for stormwater. We got to do something." He had a good idea. Yeah, yeah. well, just every, never got everybody finalized. had an idea of what a problem it was. You mm -hmm. just you got to do something. Right. So. And they, but so so yes, to answer your question, there and Derek, his projects were the, this was one of them, the water main okay. looping back, and Derek uh, Marcus's were. I think the force main project that we were looking at, uh, north and south. Just so you're, you're aware of what, what we go through with the utilities, we're on, we're, if you haven't noticed, we're on a kick of getting these things upgraded and to a state where they're going to sustain themselves for a very long time. We just had a study from uh, Simpson Associates, of people who come and exercise our fire hydrants and check out things, and we've got uh, I don't want to identify them right now because we're still working on it, but they have identified three other areas besides these two I just talked about where we have uh, considerable leakage that, <laughs> you know, you know, they're not bubbling up out of the ground, but you're losing water in, in three areas that they're saying, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. they're saying you ought to be investigating and taking care of these because money is going right into the ground. So, you know, uh, it's all about keeping that infrastructure updated. So do we need to take a vote on that? Would you please? I, I'll, yeah. Can I have a motion to? I'll make a motion. I'll to second. Allocate okay. those funds according to how it's been discussed. Made by Wilson, seconded by Garrett. Those in favor? Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> And then on new business, we have 2021 budget transfers. What do you want to transfer? Yes, we had, uh, obviously with everything last, last year, we talked a little bit about this at the last meeting, 
but I had these are just inner fund transfers so what it is is we uh, overspent in certain budget classifications so I just need to reappropriate money from a separate one which I need council approval to do that so for instance uh, in the resolution 2-2022 uh, park operating we uh, repairs and maintenance took a real hit at the parks department <coughs> so we're moving I need to move appropriation from our equipment at the parks up to cover repair and maintenance so that's what that is uh, kind of echoes all the way down through all of those funds the park non-reverting both operating and whoops 1618 should not be operating that should be capital I apologize um, so that's what that is is there's just areas uh, we don't do we don't have these very often as you know we try to make sure I, I try to make sure we have these covered but last year we just got hit with a lot of unforeseen expenses in operations and repairs and maintenance so that's what this is to cover the shortfalls and shore everything up and keep everything square for the end of the year processing so I get that finalized and that is uh Resolution 02-2022? Correct. Um, do I have a motion for the reading of that resolution? So moved by title. Thompson, seconded by second. Goodman, seconded. Those in favor for the reading? Okay. You want to have the reading? Resolution 2-2022. You did say my title only. <laughs> yes. Who said my title only? Chase. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, we'll yeah. get it the next time. Okay. <laughs> that slipped right along, didn't it? It's a resolution. I only need to read it once. Yeah, so we need to read it once. Those in favor of adopting resolution uh, 02 2022. So move, I move for the adoption of resolution 02 2022. Do I have a second? Second. Goodman. And then Wilson. I got okay. it. Those in favor? So be it. Okay. Next on our new business, we have Rick Calvert here, who uh, is uh, the president of uh, B and B Manufacturing. Um, and Rick is he's our newest citizen of Rochester. Uh, his company is coming to town to purchase the uh, Gerties building. And Rick, would you like to tell us what you're doing there? Sure. Um, so b, b Manufacturing is actually owned by uh, one individual named Robert Hamilton. And we have a facility of about 100 people and 85,000 square feet in LaPorte, Indiana. We also own a business in Toronto called Toronto Gear Works, which is about 10 people and 10,000 square feet. Last year, our new orders were up 50%. Our uh, dollars off the back door were up 24%, uh, while our head count was down 15%. So our intent is to set up a, a small machining operation with highly skilled uh, people, where hopefully we can uh, take advantage of some of the people that are commuting out to Warsaw and take advantage of some of the turmoil that's going in on in Warsaw and develop a, a small skilled machining operation shop right here in Rochester. Um, so we will, uh, they will be, if you look at the uh, SB1, you'll see that we're um, committing to uh, 2.72 million in salaries over the next five years. Um, it'll be comprised of a manager and uh, seven people in 22, and then we're just going to methodically grow it. The intent here is to uh, uh, under promise and over deliver. So we expect to grow at a much faster rate than what we're putting in the SB1. Um, and uh, you know, we look forward to your uh, approval and any questions you might have. And I would also add, and I, I think this has been asked, and I think that we're told it's not possible, but if, yeah, if you have the ability to uh, approve the um, resolution in one reading on an expedited basis, we would be grateful for that. 
Um, it allows us to set up equipment and get going more quickly. Uh, otherwise, we need to uh, sit in a holding pattern uh, to get through the second reading. So, I, I, I think what stops us there, and, uh, Attorney Perkins, are you there? Have you been listening? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think we have to have uh, full counsel to uh, to do that. Do this all in one no. evening? No. So cool. No, I I think it's a I think it's a different problem. Um, I, it has to be done in the. Uh, um, the initial resolution and the confirmatory resolution, and those have to be separated. Okay. Correct. Okay. I was going to say, there's a the way the process works. There's a declaratory resolution, which is the one being presented tonight, um, but there has to be a public hearing. And in order to do the public hearing, that's where the confirmatory resolution comes in, because the public hearing and confirmatory resolution fall in the second meeting. So that's why we cannot do both uh, uh, declaratory and confirmatory because of the public hearing process, because that has to be advertised. Yeah, someone may right. want to object to this. Mm -hmm. To a tax abatement. Tax abatement, yeah. Okay. But we only need a quorum to... Uh, For a okay. resolution, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, any discussions? I have a question. After that initial five-year period, how many employees do you expect to have here in this location? Um, that particular number that I've given you is based on 12 people in five years. Um, they, we are constrained, our growth is constrained by labor capacity. So if we can, if our strategy works and we can hire more people and be more effective, there's plenty of room in that building right now. We're just, we're intending to just set up on a small portion of it. Okay. Well, and you're, uh your customer situation is pretty guaranteed because you're, you're tier two to the outside world. You're feeding your plant to a port, right? That's correct. Yeah. You, uh, you make the product to a certain stage and then it's finished in a port? That's what we intend to do here, right? Okay. Yeah. So this will be the more, um, this will be the machining operations. What we do there is more manual. Um, more assembly work or such there. Right. Yeah. Any other questions? And just to confirm, you're seeking a five-year abatement for the equipment because that's the maximum we, we can go on, a, yeah. on an actual equipment. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Do I have a motion for the first reading of the resolution? So moved uh, by title only. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can tell he's the reader. <laughs> Do I have a second? Seconded by Smith. Okay, those in favor by title only. Okay, unanimous. If you would. Resolution number 1-122, deprecatory resolution for the designation of economic revitalization area, application of power transmission products, LLC. Okay. All right, and so the, uh, the next process is to bring you need well, to vote on the resolution okay. for the adoption of resolution 1-2022. Okay. Same two. Those in favor of the resolution. Okay. Can favorite. I make one final remark? Sure. Um, so the relationship between B and D manufacturing, and you'll see the resolution is for uh, power transmission. It, this says products, but it's actually power transmission components. That's an entity that we established about two weeks ago. And that'll be the name of the business uh, here in Rochester. Oh, uh, then we have to redo that whole thing? Oh, my gosh. It's going to be called Power Transmission Products Division. Huh? Power Transmission Components. Components. Oh, well, see. <coughs> Brian, I will complete this, and then I will get with you for final signature. Thanks for presenting. Welcome to Rochester. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Rochester. Thank you. Okay. Next on, uh, next on our new business uh, is the 2021 Fulton County Health Department report. Basically, the uh, report on our $50,000 contribution. Yes, she sent over, uh, and it was in the packet, she just sent over basically an itemized list of everything that that money was spent towards for their COVID relief and testing. And I, I might add, uh, when I was out there for my, my shot, uh, they were so, so very appreciative of our getting 50000 so they could get 
So they wouldn't be out there right now if we hadn't done that. Or the council hadn't done that. So you want to express deepest gratitude to me. And Dr. Raymond was the same way. He shook my hand and thanked me up one side and down the other. So it was very much appreciated, folks. Um, okay. We've got uh, one other the ordinance, ordinance. Yeah. yeah, that we discussed last time regarding a uh, parking situation <coughs> out at uh, the south end of town in the uh, in the uh, shopping center. Uh, Andy, uh, yes. would you like to explain the situation again at? Uh, we had an ordinance written for a parking uh, problem that was brought to your attention. Yeah, just right there on Ralph Place Drive between Wendy's and Burger King, uh, apparently. During lunchtime, people park there uh, between Main Street or 25 and Potawatomi, and it can cause some congestion. So just to relieve any of that, if we just have no parking on the north and south side of Ralph Place Drive from Main until Potawatomi, I think that will resolve it. Uh, I don't think it will inconvenience anyone either. Okay. We discussed it at length for those of you who were here last night. I remember we asked Andy to go forth and put an ordinance together. That would be ordinance number 01-2022. Uh, you all have a copy of it. Uh, anybody like to make a motion for the uh, first reading of ordinance uh, 01-2022? So moved, moved by title, title only. Moved to read by title only by Goodman, seconded by Smith. These guys tag team yes. over here. Those in favor of reading the ordinance by title only. Okay. I just want to make sure people are aware of what it is. Is because I, I wasn't going to let him do it a second time. You know, we got to read it. Okay. Yeah. You ready? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, he could, he could, he could, he could say, you know, you can't park anywhere. Ordinance number one dash twenty twenty two, an ordinance amending the parking schedules. Any discussion? Do I? I'll move that we read and the rule. Of ordinance one number one twenty twenty two, the second reading in its entirety. Well, I'm saying that one too. Those in favor. I'm giving that one to John. He's the loudest. Just right. thanks, John. Okay. All right. Ordinance number one dash twenty twenty two, an ordinance amending the parking schedules. Whereas the Common Council of the City of Rochester that certain portions of the city's parking schedule should be amended. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Common Council of the City of Rochester that Chapter seventy six of the Rochester City Code is amended to include in Schedule one no parking zones that it shall be unlawful to park a motor vehicle in the following place roush place drive between main street and potawatomi lane uh, south of roush place drive and main street side north and south okay any discussions on the, uh, the ordinance okay do i have a motion to yes. Suspend the rules. And suspend the rules and have the third and final reading tonight. So moved. Okay, I've got stereo going now. Thompson Thompson moved to suspend the rules and have the uh, third reading by title only tonight, and it was seconded by. I think John seconded. <laughs> you got it, John. Right. Well, okay. Ran, ran, had okay. And, and I just want to confirm, Andy, we're okay to do this because it's unanimous, correct? Since we have six council members. Yes. Yeah, we're okay to do that since it's unanimous. You can introduce it and pass it in the same because you have enough uh, okay. members present to do that in the same meeting. And also, uh, before they sign this evening, check your inbox. I'm going to send you a version without the typo. I was gonna I was gonna mention that, that to you, but I <laughs> thought I would not call you out on Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> you, you. You can't you can't tell by Goodman's readings, okay? No. <laughs> They're flu yeah. Right. I I have the feeling that when his little girl says, Can I have a story before bed? He says, By title only. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to my kids. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, we've got a motion yes. to suspend the rules. Uh, Chase, 
made the motion. It was seconded by Garrett. Those in favor, suspend the rule and have a third reading by title only, and it's unanimous. If you would, my friend. Ordinance number 1-2022 and ordinance amending the parking schedules. Thank you. And uh, do I have a motion to pass ordinance number 01-2022? Wilson makes second. motion seconded by Goodman. Those in favor? It passes. Thank you. Peter Rabbit, title only. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh, now we're ready to talk uh, to our fire chief, Tom Butler. Tom, you got something for us tonight? Good evening, yeah. For the month of December, uh, mutual aid fires, one in Midtown, one in Henry Township, one in Nabanabi Township. Auto fire alarms, one in the city, one in Rochester Township. Garage fires, two in Rochester Township. Calls for smoke, one in the city. Accidents, four in the city, three in Rochester Township, two in Richland Township. Medical assist, 22 in the city, six in Rochester Township, four in Richland Township, two in Newcastle. Down power lines, one in the city. Gas leaks, two in the city, one in Rochester Township. Canceled calls, five in the city, two in Rochester Township, one in Richland Township. That should come to a total of 63 runs and we conducted one drill. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Okay. Anything for Tom? Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Okay, uh, police chief, Sean. Uh, for the month of December, there were 27 accidents. Uh, we issued 20, 27 warnings. Uh, there were 35 total offenses, 39 case reports, 410 calls for service, 25 lockouts, 6 towed vehicles, and 16 people incarcerated. Um, and there are several reports here. I'm not going to go through everything. Uh, after that, you've got the crimes that individuals were lodged for for the year. Um, and then you've got the, the yearly stats. <clears throat> the highlights and how they compare to the last five years. Um, almost everything was down except for traffic accidents. We had 283 last year compared to 165 the year before. Uh, calls for service, we had 6,252 last year. Uh, that's our lowest in five years. But I attribute a lot of that to, uh, we had a lot of single coverage shift, um, several people out with COVID throughout the year. Um, <coughs> excuse me. We were down two officers, so um, that makes a huge difference. Um, when, when you're single coverage, you have to be more reactive than proactive. You just have to, have to wait and take your calls, and, and you can't be proactive and out looking for stuff, trying to get into something, uh, because you might be the only one on, and if you're on a traffic stop, in the middle of something, you get called to a domestic on the other side of town, you gotta go. So, I attribute a lot of that to the lower numbers um, and being, being down two officers. Um, and then you have the, the crimes individuals were lodged for for the year, and you also have 2020 stats to compare those to. Uh, possession of meth is still the number one, however, it is uh, lower than the year before. And then the last one are the incident types that we had throughout the year um, and how many, how many of each of those types of incidents. I think the, the leading incident type was traffic offenses with 723 for the year. So if you, in your spare time, you don't have anything else better to do and want to read through those and have any questions, feel free to give me a call and I'll try to explain anything I can. Other than that, uh, Bryce Michael, is our newest hire. He started last Monday. Um, we've got him through pre-basic, and right now he's just in administrative phase of his FTO in the office, learning the computer system and, and how we enter things, and, and it's gonna be a slow process. He has virtually no experience, so it's gonna be a slow process. Brady Briggs, our last hire, goes to the academy in May. So, and they've increased that to 16 weeks now all 16 weeks at the academy there's no distance learning which is nice um, but it's going to be for a full 16 weeks it'll be out other than that that's about all i have unless you guys have any questions about anything any questions for the chief i'd like to say something to you chief in public 
I know, you always go, oh my God. Here it comes. Here it comes. <clears throat> this is in Chicago. We don't have the problems they have in Chicago. But we had some visitors from the Illinois area uh, just before New Year's who uh, had murdered a police officer over there. And Officer Haney and Officer McIntyre participated in the capture of those two. And even though we don't deal with that kind of <clears throat> criminality on a daily basis, it's nice to know we have officers who can handle it. Absolutely. And I attribute that to you. I appreciate it. And your leadership. And I want the council to know we are extremely fortunate. We are. Um, we've got a, a good group. Not necessary. Not necessary. Uh, we've got a good group. Um, they've all got a good head, head on their shoulders. Um, but we are not immune to the same type of crimes, just on a much smaller scale, thankfully. So I, I, I feel fortunate that I live and work in a small town because we don't have the the types of crimes you don't have a murder every day to go right. investigate yeah but i appreciate it thank you you bet you. thank you okay uh <clears throat> the rest of the folks uh we kind of touched base on our storm water and uh, the uh, uh waste treatment plant situation our project there continues to move ahead our 7.5 million dollar project continues to move ahead uh we not lost much ground at all due to the weather. It's been organized and, and laid out so that we can move along and uh, are looking at finishing it up by the end of this year. So that's a, that's a big, big, big deal for us. Uh, we are continuing our negotiations. We've got Baker Tilly and uh, the Commonwealth folks involved in helping us put together a plan for the landfill that will involve building of the transmission line when they will be shipping the leaches to us by pipeline and they will be paying for it. We're working out the details of that now. So that will be coming up probably either the end of this year or the first part of the next year situation. Uh, okay, committee reports. We don't have anybody from RDP or Lake Manitow Association. Ruth, Area Planning Commission. Oh, meet tomorrow. It's canceled. Huh? For sure they're getting a thing. Yeah. Something. <coughs> BZA is tomorrow, oh, not BZA. Area Planning. Right, Area Planning. I'm sorry, Thursday. Time. Thursday is Area Planning. No. Or it's on excuse Mondays. me, excuse it's me. It's on Monday. Where is Downtown, or uh, the Redevelopment Commission. That's tomorrow morning. Okay. <laughs> Call me. There's a schedule. <laughs> There's a schedule. There's okay. Yeah. So, yeah, redevelopment is tomorrow. <clears throat> right. Don't Area plan has been canceled? No. No. The BCA Area, meeting the is, tomorrow. is tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tomorrow. They're tomorrow. two separate meetings. There are two separate agencies and two separate meetings. Okay. Area plan meets the third Monday of the month. And it was canceled. And that one was canceled. That one was canceled. That one was canceled. BZA okay. meets the fourth Wednesday Correct. of the month. Correct. I'm getting too many emails if I, if I got the wrong one. <laughs> and re you can get a lot of emails. And then yeah. our Redevelopment Commission meets the last Wednesday of every month which at 8.30 in the morning. Which we're meeting which which is tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are, are we good? Yes, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. I know when the water board meets yeah. next Tuesday. Water board meets on February 7th. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, you don't want to know. Let me look. Let me look. Okay. Let me look. <laughs> yeah, there are lots. There's a reason I sent a calendar out. <laughs> okay, so that's area plan. Petco, Brian. Uh, everyone get the minutes? Mm -hmm. No. No? I do. <laughs> because. <laughs> I'll forward it to everybody. Oh, Ted called me in his office. Remember? Oh yeah, it's my fault. It's Ted's it's fault. It's my fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> always. Okay. Yeah, always. Always. <clears throat> so we met Friday, and I printed this, and I left it on my desk but from my phone. So we um, presented our slate of officers. Basically, we we kept the same slate from last year. David Heidi, president. Um, I'll serve as vice president. Uh, we did replace Jane Murphy um, as secretary with Michelle Million. Um, Jane is actually leaving the board. 
Um, the consultant search committee recommended accepting the proposal from Kimberly's business by design for FedCo's organization assessment. Um, we crafted a new executive director job description. Uh, we're gonna have um, the consultant look that over, uh, make sure we didn't leave anything out. There's nothing we need to add before we post it. Um, Tiffany also provided the board with promissory note from REMC to extend the Blackwater Drive, the loan to extend Blackwater Drive. It was reviewed by the attorney. Um, there was uh, no issues with it. And then the ready grant. And I'm gonna read this because it, it's alphabet soup. So here you go. Tiffany noted that NCIRPC Ready administrative team met with IEDC recently has been announced that Ready is being funded with ARPA funds. IEDC has hired a firm to review all projects from all regions to eliminate those that don't fall in the ARPA funds guidelines. NCR, NCIRPC has a meeting on February 2nd with IEDC to discuss steps moving forward. So all those projects that were presented are going to be scrutinized and make sure that they fall within ARPA guidelines. Um, and then of course the Small Business Committee is working with the Riches on the T-Mobile Hometown Grant for their project. Um, other business, the Times Theater announced their plans for Round Barn R Opry. I think I saw something about that in the paper this mm -hmm. week. It's very exciting. It's cool. And then of course, um, we had the abatement request with B&B tonight. So that's my report. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Cheryl was in last week, more of you can sit down, and uh, she's got a pretty good finger on the pulse of things at the state. The IEDC is not going to let these funds, these uh, ready grant funds, just be distributed by the uh, by the regions by themselves. They're going to keep a hand on it and go through the projects academically with each of the regions to make sure they are worthy of submission. You know, as a taxpayer, you should say, "Yay!" You know. They're doing. They're using. Uh, they're using some um, strategies here that is probably pretty good stuff. Um. Yeah. Any questions for Brian? Okay. Yeah. Redevelopment commission tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Artboard Chase. Um, so I have some information from the December meeting, but I'm sure it's probably not very accurate. Um, I wasn't able to make the last meeting because I was sick, but um, let me just name some things off and see if they do. Sure, you sure. agree with that. Throw them out. Um, so I know Mitch Hayes will continue for another term on the um, park board, and then there will be no park program again for the 2022 year due to COVID. Uh, they'll reevaluate that for 2023. Um, we are going to investigate uh, about time clocks for the city pool. I don't know if that was done or not. Or they have time clocks. There is a time clock. Yeah. I, 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 oh, so we just. Yeah, I think it's um, process more than physical right. equipment. Right. It was, it was discussed that they're putting the process together so everybody's utilizing the time clock. Mm -hmm. Uh, there were some players that uh, inquired about playing through the winter, and the board had decided <coughs> that there wouldn't be no playing allowed uh, during those times that the, the, um, the, golf, the course. golf course is closed. And then the insurance company was still looking at working on figures from the incident at the golf course, um, and then they'd be, the city would be filing a civil suit after criminal case is complete. Uh, any update on that? Um, that's about it. Uh, the only thing to add, that's pretty good. The only thing to add, uh, they did vote on uh, their officers for this year moving forward. And uh, <laughs> kind of like the city council almost. They said, hey, we move, we keep everybody the way they are. And the president and the secretary both went, yike. <laughs> so our president continues to be uh, 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 
Kay, Kay Nixon Davis, and uh, the secretary is Shelly Coles. Shelly went kicking and screaming, I have to say, but she does a good job at it. Okay, the other, the other issue that was discussed that is of uh, relative importance to the whole community is the fact that our over 50-year-old swimming pool is in tough shape. Uh, in mechanically, internally, uh, the infrastructure to it is needing uh, a lot of things. Uh, also, anybody who's noticed the cement work and such out there, is, it's, it's, it's showing its age, rather, rather quickly. This is becoming an annual tradition. Yeah, uh, well, we've had, uh, we've got an engineering firm and a couple of contractors now digging into it uh, deeply to come back with uh, their assessment. Their, their mission was to come back with three possible suggestions for us. Same the drill. Well, it's, uh, it's going to come back with a big number on them, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, but the figures from last year, we had 5,000 folks go through that thing. There were 5,000 turns on the turnstile going through that thing. It's a lot of usage, and we got a lot of kids that uh, that's where they are in the summer. And For a two and a half, is that two and a half months? Basically, they're open, roughly? Three months. May, see, June, July. yeah. I mean, two and a half months is about all we're open. So we turn a lot of uh, people through People that. through there. I'm sure Chief Shots would rather have them there than other places, right? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> not, not, after, not after hours. Not yet. <laughs> right. right. Anyway, it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a hot topic. Uh, the initial investigation says you got one year, maybe two years left on this thing. So we'll be talking about it, I'm sure, quite regularly. Okay, um, the Rochester BZA and Council on Aging March. Council on Aging met yesterday. Uh, Transpo is now averaging over 100 trips a day, so uh, that is starting to get back to numbers that we saw a couple of years ago. Other than that, uh, there was no report from Transpo. On RSVP, they are currently working on two trips in uh, 2022. One is to Cape Cod in May. That's a cost of $950 a person. And then they are working on a trip to Washington, D.C. in July, which is uh, $990 a person. They are going to start scheduling appointments for doing the uh, folks' tax returns uh, in February. I forget how many they did uh, last year, but it's a significant number that they uh, provide help in, in providing those tax returns for folks that don't have any other way to do it. Do you have a percentage on how many of them have gone to prison you know, since the uh, IRS has come? I am comfortable to say oh. that 100 percent have not gone Great. to prison. Great. Great. We like hearing that. They're running a perfect record. We like hearing that. Yeah. From uh, the standpoint of the center itself, uh, there is going to be installed a new telephone line that's going to ring at the community center, but the, the telephone and the line is going to be paid for by HOPE. And the idea is that the center gets a lot of these phone calls anyway, people asking where can I go, who do I need to talk to. Uh, so the RSVP volunteers will still be answering the phone but the cost is going to be borne by home. And uh, that, that's just a, I believe, you could fact check me on it. I'm not quite sure. I believe that Fulton County is the last county to have this line in place. It's, it's like you dial 211 or something like that. And uh, so that, that is uh, going to be installed here 
pretty soon. It, the estimate, the talking to Doug Beller, estimated in 2020 and half of 2021, the center lost about $104,000 due to COVID. So, significant numbers. BZA meeting is tomorrow night. Uh, the important thing for people to know if they plan to attend, the meeting usually happens here. It's been moved to the fairgrounds because the project on the south end of town is on that agenda. Uh, Rob Schaefer's picked a bad night to go to the zoning board to talk about his duplexes. Could I, I'm sure it'll be an uh, well-attended, active uh, meeting tomorrow night for the BCA. Well, you know, that could work two ways. They could say, let's get Rob's taken care of and move on, or, well, or it could be drawn out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'm not sure that he wanted to present in front of <laughs> 50 to yeah. 100 people. Uh, okay. I don't, I don't I see. know. Normally, it's just the board <clears> and <throat> a few other people. So, yeah. Other than questions, that's my report. Anybody have any questions? What time is that meeting? Six. We had uh, a visit today. We had a meeting today with Doug. No. And he was coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was quite informative. We talked about different issues with both the buildings. We also discussed the fact that you brought up a few meetings ago about the ownership uh, in question. And, uh, you know, my recollection going back 18 years of being on the council was that that garage, the Transpo garage, was built with a stimulus grant that went through the county and uh, that this council uh, and BZA agreed to lease the uh, uh, area planning folks over there uh, the property to build the garage on for a buck for 90, well actually the county took that lease, but for 99 years. Well, as happens, like I said, those things years ago end up on pieces of paper here, there, and everywhere. Nobody been able to find anything to back all that up. So we got new players involved. And the county all thought the city is responsible for that building. And I'm going, no, no, no. I was there. I know, I know. And uh, haven't been able to find anything. Well, Doug went back, looked in his files. He has now found a copy of the grant and a copy of the lease agreement with the city. And he's going to get me copies of it tomorrow. So that'll be quite interesting to take a look at and go through. So we're getting the information, uh, our arms around it, so. Good. But uh, we had a real, real good meeting about what needs to be done over there maintenance-wise and such. And we're gonna have Randy Williams take a walk through the place. And I told him, I said, listen, I, this is before he found this stuff. I said, we can't get this straightened out. I said, we just need to do what we've done with the lights downtown. Put our arms around it, say it's our property, pull it all back. If the county would go for it and give us the resolution or whatever to do it, we just take it back under our wings and make it all one thing again because it just, it's, it's really convoluted right now. But we'll see what the uh, what the grant and the, uh, the lease agreement says. We might not be able to do that just because of the grant. Because of our yeah. And Doug said, well, that seemed to make sense that the county would have been involved because the federal involvement over there all goes through the county. So we'll get we'll get this thing straightened out, but we need to get it straightened out so that people coming along all understand what the situation is. Thank you, Marty. Appreciate that. Are you going to be at the BZA tomorrow night? Okay. All right. Okay. Any other questions for Marty? Okay. Solid Waste and Animal Adoption Center, Todd? Yes. Had our first meeting for the Solid Waste District last night. Uh, we meet every other month, so these statistics, for the most part, are for a two-month period. Uh, over the last two months, the recycling center has managed 125 tons of recyclables for a value of $21,377. Uh, month of November was the last total we had for the county line land. <coughs> uh, 
uh, received 38,973 tons of waste. Uh, Fulton County accounted for 14% of that. The state of Indiana was the rest of it. And uh, we collected for the Solid Waste District as a part of the district host fee and then the county host fee, $68,612 to continue the maintenance of the projects there. Um, we purchased a trailer, utility trailer, for recycling, moving of recycling materials for $3,000. And they are in the process of purchasing a new skid loader, new skid loader for $30,700 from New Holland here in town. Officers were elected. Tim Strasser is going to continue as chair. Philip Olinger is vice chair, and Melinda Streeter will continue as board secretary. And that was our business there. The uh, Animal Adoption Center is continuing to thrive. Uh, they were in the black to the tune of $127,000 this last year. Oh, that's wonderful. It's doing really well. Yeah. Well, 27,000. That is I thought you said they, uh, to, to interrupt you there, John and I can both remember when they didn't have enough money to feed a cat. Yeah. Remember, John? People yeah. we were taking bags of food out there. Yeah. 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 That's, that's awesome. wonderful. Uh, I Great can work. say I've been with working with the leadership group there for a year now, and we are very blessed to have the leadership team together. It's put together. They are dedicated, they're intelligent, they're diligent, just very qualified people doing a good job out there. It's all about having a heart for service. Yeah, that's wonderful yeah. news. Yep. Uh, they adopted out 468 cats last year <laughs> and 146 dogs, and they had the highest survival rate or save rate that they've ever had. 96.5% for the cats and 99.9% for the dogs. So, mm. That's wonderful. Great work. And Janet's going to come see us sometime? She will. Yeah, yeah probably next month or two. That'd be great. I'd yeah. love to compliment her in person. She's really done a great job. She has. Yeah. <clears throat> Any questions for Councilman Wilson? Okay, thanks, Todd. John, anything for water board? Really, there was nothing. Everything's running ship shape. The water board had uh, brought in two new board members, uh, Cassie and uh, Rachel. Mm -hmm. um, and everything else is going, there was nobody going on vacation this month, which was, I can hardly believe it, but that's what Derek said. <coughs> uh, everything's running smooth the water board. Derek's not on vacation. So. Nobody is. <laughs> nobody is. <laughs> But they're staying. But they're staying busy. This cold weather yeah. Uh, yeah. brings out the evil in water. Yeah, it does. It does. I do. It brings out the evil. You know, the water main work that we have to end though is, is is paying back. We're not over there on Monroe Street in ten below zero weather. We're out here on Old Thirty One. Yeah, yeah. For three days. Yeah. Twenty five. Yeah. Twenty five is another one. Yeah. Still, still working, working. I like to say the infrastructure. Any questions for John? Okay, thank you. Uh, before we move on, I see we have a, a group back there in uniform. I always like to appreciate the folks in uniform. We've got the, the Boy Scouts with us? Yeah, yeah. It, well, Rochester Boy Scouts and the girls troop also. Okay. It's with us. Wonderful, wonderful. And I, what this is one of these. Hey, we have to go to this for a merit badge. Is that what yeah. it's? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I see the shaking of the head over here. Yeah. Yep. They're working on, some are working on their communication merit badge, and others are working on citizen of the community okay. merit badges. Good. Do, do any of you uh, back there have a question for any of our council members? Any questions? Mm -hmm. No. Sometimes yes. we can't hear you. That's my question. Not really a question. What'd you say? Can't really hear some of you back here. There's <laughs> no be, echo. <laughs> must be the room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we do not use microphones. and. Uh, it's like a dead zone. 
Yeah, <laughs> normally we have people up here, you know, here in this area right here. And COVID has done lots of things for us. Do we pick up well for RTC? Oh, perfectly. Okay. We got a good mic. I think it's just the kids in the back. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, they have to stay away. <laughs> and since we're only about half here, you can bank on seeing us again in the not too distant future. Good. That, that's fine. Good. That's fine. I, I think it's great that you take an interest. Uh, I would say, those of you, uh, it's not just take working on a, it's not just working on your merit badge. Take it, take it to heart. There's, you could be in one of these seats someday. And as you heard Councilman Wilson just state about the uh, about the animal center. It's about having a heart for service. That's when things happen. So, thank you for coming. Thank Is Evie back there? Evie? Are you back here? Who? Evie? No, she's not here. Okay. Just speak up, Marty. They can't hear her back here. Yeah. Just speak up. <laughs> Take your mask down and holler. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any legal issues we haven't covered, uh, Lawyer Perkins? No, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> no, Mr. Mayor, I like that. I tell you, he echoes pretty good in that little library, doesn't he? <laughs> okay, uh, anybody else? Anything else to throw out up here before we call for it? Okay. Second. Those in favor? 